our whole existence revolves around two pillars. On one hand, there is hereditary map, which contains all the information for the formation of our body. And on the other hand is our body itself, with each and every component of it performing different functions. But then, the question arises, what is the relationship between information and our functional machinery? Our today's story is to explore this greatest of relationship. We cannot know anything about organic life without knowing about this relationship. And that is why it is called the central dogma of life. Protein is the most intricate, elastic and diverse molecule in the whole universe as far as we know. In our body, there are thousands of proteins performing different functions all the time. Even now, when you are watching this program, the proteins in your cells are performing one function or the other. For instance, your eyes are helping you to watch this program because of the activity of rhodopsin protein. It is because of the protein complexes present in your nervous system cells, also known as neurons, which are making it possible that you can understand this program. One example of such protein is sodium potassium pump. You are moving different parts of your body because of actin and myosin protein. Similarly, our skin maintains all its freshness and beauty because of the activity of integrin and fibronectin proteins, etc. Now here arises the million dollar question that what is the relationship between our information molecule that is DNA and the cellular machinery that are performing all sorts of functions, I mean proteins. Knowing about the relationship between DNA and proteins have been one of the greatest challenge in the history of science and the discovery of DNA in 1953 was an important step towards fulfilling this great challenge. After just five years of discovering DNA, Sir Francis Crick very intelligently postulated the potential relationship between these two organic moieties. Then in 60, three young scientists, Hargobind Thorana from Wisconsin University, Marshall Nirenberg from NIH and Robert Hawley from Cornell University experimentally discovered the relationship between our genetic blueprint and our functional machinery with mechanistic details. All three of them were awarded with prestigious Nobel Prize in Physiology for this remarkable achievement of decoding our code. As a result of untiring efforts of these and other scientists, we have a picture of DNA protein relationship which undoubtedly is one of the greatest marvel of nature. The first step in making proteins from DNA is the formation of messenger RNA or mRNA from DNA. This process is termed as transcription. mRNA is very similar to DNA, but instead of two, mRNA is made up of single strand. The process of transcription is actually very much similar to the process of making DNA from DNA which is also termed as replication. During transcription, one of the DNA strands acts as template strand for the formation of single stranded mRNA. In this way, the newly formed mRNA is complementary to the DNA strand which was acting as the template strand. Once formed, mRNA moves from nucleus to cytoplasm. In cytoplasm, ribosomes start attaching with mRNA. Ribosomes are combination of RNA and proteins and therefore 
they are also termed as ribonucleoproteins on mrna the ribosomes are attached on a combination of three nucleotides each this combination of three nucleotides is also termed as codon here an other rna molecule called transfer rna or trna also enter the ribosomes trna have two arms one arm contains anticodon and is complementary to the codon of mrna while the other arm of trna contains amino acid in this way for each of the 20 amino acids there is a specific molecule of trna during the process of protein synthesis which is also termed as translation ribosomes move from one codon to the next while trna keeps on entering and exiting the ribosomes and adding its amino acids to the growing chain of amino acids this chain is called polypeptide chain the polypeptide chain undergoes some structural changes before becoming a fully functional protein and perform all those functions because of which we are alive so you can see that the sequence of amino acids which makes a protein depends upon the sequence of nucleotides on mrna which in turn depends upon the sequence of nucleotides on dna the structure of protein depends upon the sequence of amino acid and it is the structure which defines the function of a protein so now you know that the role of dna in this hereditary process is just like a map which guides to make structure of real machinery of our cells the proteins this most beautiful and attractive but highly intricate journey of dna to protein have been occurring for millions of years in all the living things from bacteria to fish to us and is responsible for our existence survival and evolution